It's now after all these years because I truly found love. Not that I ever was. <laughs> Up to this point, it was nobody's fault but my own because I couldn't love. I couldn't love because it brought back the past. And I always thought that I would lose it, just like I lost the past. Um, Miss Ensor is here. She was at the tribute that was given to me by the uh, uh, film forum. And you know, I told the story at the time that after the war, I went into five years of analysis, five days a week, okay? At the end, the analyst said to me, well, Mr. Garfine, you're going back to New York. What have you learned in these five years? And I said, well, uh, the war is over. I can start to trust people. And uh, he said, no, 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 no. I want to know about your relationship with women. I want to know about love. You just went through a divorce. So what, what have you learned from this? And uh, I couldn't answer. It took me two more weeks. I came back. I said, I know you want me to articulate it, but I can't articulate it. You have to articulate it. He said, Mr. Garfunkel, you were 13 years old. And you were not sure. You couldn't save your sister who was 10 years old. So now you get into relationships with women that you want to save, not based on a real communion of experience or love. And uh, there was a break between the showing and the film, and in the audience was uh, a friend of mine, Jack, who was an important analyst, became an important analyst in, in the States, and was also in the camps. And he, during the break, came up to me and he said, Jack, that analyst was okay, but he didn't get it right. I said, what are you talking about, Jack? He said, he didn't get it right. It wasn't your sister, Jack. <laughs> Excuse me. It was your mother. I couldn't say it. <laughs> and she was amazing. I'm here because of her. In a sense, what happened was she was 33 years old. She was married to my sister. And people were, you know, hard, they were, didn't know what was happening because they were yelling. Anybody under 16 and over 45 over there, everybody else here. And people didn't know what was happening. My mother grabbed one of the couples and said, you're a Jew. Tell me what's going on here. He ran away because if the SS saw him talking, they could shoot him. She grabbed another one and said, grab him. What's going on? You're a Jew. Tell me what's happening here. And she said, he said, leave the children, leave the old people, and he ran away. I never forget her expression. I was only 13. But <laughs> trying to grasp what that man was saying to her, you know. And... Uh, And so uh, uh, she grabbed the third one. She said, you're a Jew. Tell me what's going on. Did leave the children, leave the old people, and he ran away. Now, I was 13, I, my father was already gone, right? And she went, and she said to me, get away from me, I don't want to see you anymore. I want to tell you something. I never wanted to give birth to you. You understand that? I hate you. I said, no. what? I want to stay with you. Get away. I don't ever. I hate you. I never really wanted to bring them. Push me towards the men. And I thought at that moment, well, I hope she drops dead. Or I'll die and then she'll know what it's like. Okay? And, uh, and then I was 13. I come in front of Mangala, 
right? And unlike all the stupid Holocaust films and stories, never tell the real human story, all the cliches of Hollywood, you know? So what, I would come up for a regular, you'd see it in a movie, <laughs> you know what he did? He went up to me like this. He said, how old are you? And the man behind me I never saw, with a stubble of a beard, said, your excellency, he and I are famous mosaic artists all over Europe. Out of the blue, I said to Mengele, I'm 16. He went like this, you know, and then he patted me and said, to the left. Now, guess what I did? I was 13. I felt that man was so nice. I had on my way back when a Jewish couple stops me and says, where are you going? I said, I lied to that German officer. I want to tell him the truth. I'm not 16. I'm only 13. And he took a stick, hit me over the head, and pushed me into the cab, okay? So recently, so that's what I mean when I said, my mother, who, by the way, I hated during the entire war. I never talked about her. And even after the war, my cousin said, you never talk about your mother. I kept this hatred because I felt she preferred my sister and she pushed me to my death, okay? And so um, I, I, I just, when I went to the analyst, the whole problem was, and also my relationship with women, I could never feel a real love. In a sense, I could never dare because of what happened. But what happened recently was amazing. It's not just, it's through Natalia that I was, Your smell is better because of your pain. 
fast, but I don't smell anything except something human. And the guy then looks at him, he's come quiet. I says, oh, I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? He says, I hate humanity, not individual human beings, but humanity I hate. And I realized I didn't know it until that point, why I did that production. That's exactly what happened. Like, for example, I was in a camp, and uh, at one point during the last months that I was in that camp, I was just asked to open and close the door of the camp. And, uh, and then I was in the death march. Okay, now in the death march, the moment you wavered, looked weak, when they came by on the motorbikes, they would shoot you, okay? One of the German soldiers, before that, took his gun under my arm and carried me. And then he said to me, the motorbikes are coming. You better be strong and stand up. And I'll come back, I'll carry you. And he went and carried me. And I realized, there you go, individuals, right? Not humanity. Look around you right now. I, the way they use the Holocaust, just awful for me, you know? Even that phrase, never again. I want to say, are you kidding? Never again? Look what's happening. Look what they're doing to kids, the women everywhere. Of course, what I would say, the phrase should not be never again. The phrase should be, look what humanity can do. Just keep your eyes open and realize what they're capable of. But individual human beings are astonishing. The same way when I was liberated in Belgium. I was 14, I weighed uh, 48 pounds, 23 kilos, I couldn't walk anymore. And the Swedes took me to a hospital to recuperate, and there too was a nurse, Sister Hedwig. I called her Muti, you know, which is like saying mother, you know, and I said, uh, and she wouldn't go home. She would stay in the hospital so that she would be there at night in case I needed her, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is, it's now after all these years, before that, it was cut off, just like there was a, um, they invited me to Geneva to talk about the Holocaust. And uh, there was a Q and A and uh, and one person got up and said, Mr. Gottman, I'm an analyst, famous analyst. My parents went through what you went through, but they don't want to talk about it. They don't never want to say anything. And it's remarkable that you're able to even express it, okay? And, uh, and another analyst got up and said, me too, Mr. Gottman. I have my family, but they won't discuss anything. So I said, you don't understand. Do you know what's being presented on television? It's all cliches, all Hollywood phraseology about horrors, this, nothing human, nothing personal. You know, like even in Spielberg's film, and they come to, to the Auschwitz or whatever, the people in the train go, ah, oh. You know what my mother did? Called my sister's hair straightened out my jacket and my, and not only that, <laughs> what was on, I was 13. What did I think in that train? What was happening? Well, again, I only realized this now, in my age now, because of my relationship of being able to trust love and other human beings. What did I think? I thought as a kid, this was just a matter of love.